By default, to access the Blackboard Forum feature for your course, you have to go down to your navigation, top half, under Tools, and within Tools you're going to have a discussion board right here. But there's actually an easier way and more direct way to access that, and that is by adding a tool link to our navigation menu right here. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to uh, this little plus sign. We're going to add a new tool link, and you can tell what tools are tool links by looking at the tool menu. Keeps it nice and straight and forward. We have wikis, we have contacts, these are all different kinds of tools that Blackboard has pre-installed for your course when they are created. And then Blackboard Collaborate for web conferencing. Uh, so we're going to go to the plus sign, tool link, we're not going to say, say discussion board. And then what is the type? In other words, what is the tool? Well, the tool is going to be a discussion board. Then we want to make sure that it is available to all of our users. It is checked. And now we hit submit. And again, by default, new links appear at the bottom of your navigation, top half. So I'm going to drag this guy up towards, uh, maybe toward under materials. That seems like a good, good quick spot to access it. And now when we click on this discussion board link, we go to the same place this link does. It's just much more obvious and more direct for the user. And within our discussion board, uh, you're going to first find yourself with no forums. In other words, no items found. And if you think of a discussion post as being a content item, a discussion forum it would be the content folder all of those posts are contained within. And so if you go ahead and click on this Create Forum button. It's going to give us a new option to give the name for that forum. And we're going to call this forum, uh, we'll do a Help Forum. And I'll give it a description. So utilize this forum if you are having trouble with an assignment or activity. We'll make it available. I will not restrict dates. And then for the forum settings, this is where things get a little bit interesting. By default, we have some check marks that are off and they might not want to be. So as an example, we have a check mark that allows the author to edit their own post. In other words, once you make a post, you have the option of going back and changing something. And you'll see that by default, this is checked, which is good, or not checked. And so if I click on that, we will make it checked. And then we need to also think about if you want to allow the author to delete their own post. And so we can choose that if the author makes a thread and they delete it, do we want them to be able to delete all the posts in the thread or only delete their post if nobody else has replied to it? And you're going to have to make the call depending on what you and the instructor want. The problem with these two options being unchecked by default is that you'll get students who are having a hard time uploading an assignment or embedding media and because they can't edit their posts they're going to keep posting the same thing over and over just different ways and it can quickly clutter the discussion board. We also have the ability to allow anonymous posts and this could be good if you are creating a forum where they are discussing a very sensitive topic and people are going to be much more inclined to share their experiences if their names are not attached. And so you can do that via this anonymous post. Um, now subscriptions. If you allow members to subscribe to threads, then any thread a student makes a post in, whenever that thread gets a new discussion post, they will be alerted. And then the same for the forum as well. So whenever members make a new post to a forum, they will get a link to the post. Um, or we can also include the body of their post in email. And the reason you might want to have this set to do not allow is so that if your discussion board is very busy, and you know that your students are going to be coming to your discussion board frequently, you don't want their email to get clogged with update messages to threads and forums because it can quickly get pretty annoying. So do be sensitive to how much, um, how much activity you are expecting in your discussion board if you're going to allow them to subscribe to threads. 
And of course, you could actually enable both of these. Um, well, so you can do either thread or the forum. The forum will do all threads. So it's up to you. And the student does have the option to unsubscribe if they want to. But again, just, just be sensitive to how much spam they're going to get if you enable this feature. If you want to allow your students to make new threads, so for example, this has to be checked. And if you want them to allow attachments so that they can upload assignments or files to a discussion board post, then this box should also be checked. And then the forced moderation of posts mean that the students can post something, but it's not going to show up unless a designated moderator uh, comes in and allows that post to be seen. And that will slow down the discussion and reaction time of your posts. So do be aware of how that might actually not be a good thing. And then the rate post does exactly what it says. It's a lot like the thumbs up or thumbs down button on Facebook or other social media sites. Then post tagging allows students to tag each other um, and also give little tag words to a post that they so choose. So that's kind of all we're going to go over. You also have the option of grading a, a discussion forum or a thread, but we're going to go over that in the assignments module, not in this one. So we're going to have standard view. We are not going to make people post a thread in order to view other threads. That's kind of extreme. And uh, with all of this, uh, it is available. Let's go ahead and click on submit. And now we have our forum. And you can create as many forums as you want. So maybe here's the help forum. We're going to have a assignments forum. So all discussion assignments go within this forum. Again, you're thinking about how you want to organize your course to be as clear and concise as possible. And you do have to make sure that you have all the options you want as you create each, um, each forum. Now you do have the option of going to any forum and clicking on this little circle and editing those settings at any time. Uh, well, you, you can even drag and drop how these forums are ordered, and the same for threads as well. The uh, user cannot, but as the instructor, you can. Uh, just, just kind of be aware of one thing though. So I'm going to go ahead to the assignments forum, and when we do, we see that we have some buttons here, but we cannot create a forum within a forum. All we can do is create threads. Now a thread is a series of conversations or posts that relate to a single topic. This is my thread, and then whatever I'm discussing for my subject go in here. Anybody who is discussing the legal system can post into this thread. However, if someone comes along and says, well, who cares because there's an alien base in the moon, well, that's a great story. It's also very off topic. And so they should actually create their own separate thread called alien base on the moon. And what happens a lot is that we have an instructor create a thread and they would post their example of the assignment here and then they want the students to create their own threads that address the assignment well that's great except what happens is you have to tell them okay create your own thread do not reply here unless you have a question so if they have questions they can reply to your thread but they should actually post their own individual assignments as a separate thread. And so over time, what you can get is you will have, you know, let's say we have 15 people in class. We'll have 15 week one threads, 15 week two threads, 15 week three threads, so on and so forth. And this forum is going to get super long very quickly. And you might be better off creating a forum for each week's assignment. So a week one forum, a week two assignment forum, so on and so forth. Or you could keep it with threads. You know, it's up to you. It depends on how many assignments you have and how many unique individuals are going to be posting assignments as threads. Also be aware of a phenomenon where typically the first users in a or who post tend to get the most replies and then those who are 
reply towards the end of the assignment period tend to get less replies. And so one way around that would be to have your students into small groups and each group has to respond to each of their group members.